you might think that this is OpenAI's ChatGPT app, but it's not. I'm actually running this UI and the large language model that powers it from my own computer at home. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can take your LLMs and your data with you wherever you are in just a few lines of code. Let's go. We're gonna need a few tools to get started. So I wanna walk through what each one of those is. The first one we're gonna need is Olama. I did a video on how to install that and use it, and I'll include a link to it up above. Next is Docker, which allows us to run predefined images inside of containers. You can think of these as self-contained apps that can run just about anywhere. Um, I'm not gonna cover installation here, but it should just be a one-click install where you download their installer file. Next up is the Olama web UI. Um, this is a really great open source code base that we're actually gonna be running via Docker. And this gives us all kinds of functionalities that you saw earlier. It has chat history, um, audio input, image input, um, model modification, and a lot more. Finally, you're going to need to download and make an account with ngrok. And this is software that allows us to expose an application that we are running on our computer out into the open world through a URL that they provide. I'm going to be doing this tutorial on a Mac, but all these tools should be available on Windows or whatever you're running as well. So now that we know what tools we're gonna be using, let's just start by confirming that we have Olama up and running. To do that, we just navigate to localhost and then the port 11434, uh, which is the port that Olama exposes through their API. And we can see Olama is running, so we're good to begin. Now we're going to use Docker in the command line to download and run the Olama web UI tool. I'm gonna to paste in this command here and we're gonna go through it line by line so you understand what's going on. So first up, docker run is used to create and run a new container. The hyphen D is shorthand for detach, which means that we won't need this terminal open to keep the process running. It's actually just gonna be running the background for us. Dash P is short for port, and that means that we are assigning our host port 3000 to the port 8080 that's running inside of our Docker container. Um, again, Docker is like a self-contained app, and so there may be lots of things running inside of that. And so we explicitly need to say um, which ports we're exposing to the outside world. Um, you can also think about this sort of like an apartment address and a unit number. So 3000 is sort of the um, overall apartment address that we would come to from the outside world. And then once we're in that apartment, we're looking for a specific unit and that's port 8080. So this add host command is a little bit trickier, but it's essentially doing the opposite of what we were doing with the port command. So with the port command, we were telling um, our host computer how to find something inside of our container. Um, with this, we're telling our container how it can access services outside of Docker. Specifically, we're going to be using Olama running on our host machine, not inside Docker. And so this container needs to be able to find that. And so we're essentially just giving it sort of like an address that it can find arbitrary ports that are running on our host machine. Dash V is shorthand for volume. And essentially we are creating a volume called Olama Web UI and we're mapping it to an internal uh, folder structure at app backend data. Docker images uh, essentially restart statelessly um, so if you started a container and stopped it, any data that you would have saved that you didn't persist would be eradicated in between restarts. And so what volumes allow us to do is take any data that we have saved or like any folders that we want to persist and map them to storage on our host outside of that. Now it's important to note that Docker manages the location of this storage. So we can't just go to the Olama web UI folder on our computer and expect to find data. Um, Docker is going to kind of manage that for us. But you can just remember that this is for persisting data between sessions and between restarts. Next up is the name parameter. Um, Docker makes you name your containers. Otherwise, it'll assign a name for you just randomly. But we're just naming this one Olama Web UI so we know what it is. Um, it's also important to note that Docker doesn't let you reuse names. So if you want to, you know, make another version of this, you either need to pick a different name or you need to delete this uh, container that we're creating right now. Next, we're just telling this container that we want it to restart if anything goes wrong. And finally, uh, this URL down here is the address of the um, Olama Web UI container that we're going to be downloading. And we're specifying that we want the main branch of it. If you'd like a deeper dive on the Docker CLI, um, I can include a link to their documentation down below. I'm also going to include a link to all the other tools that I'm using as well. So let's go ahead and run this command. And it's going to be downloading um, all the different data that it needs. There may be a lot of dependencies, but if you were to run this again, um, and nothing has changed, um, it should have all of this data cached for you. So we've run our Docker command and it looked like everything worked, but let's just confirm that within Docker. So we can just do Docker PS, and that will log out all of the containers that we currently have running. Um, so here um, we see the name is Olama Web UI, that's correct, and it seems to be good. Um, so what we can do now is run this port on our browser and see what we have running. So here we are in port 3000 of our local host, and we can see that we have this great Olama web UI up and running. 
Um, it's going to ask us to sign in. So because this is our first time doing this, let's go to sign up and we're going to create a new admin user. Now it's going to ask us for our full name, email and password, but it's not really going to verify any of this. So I can just go in and say test, test at fake.com password. Okay, and so we're in. Um, so we have this really awesome looking UI that looks a lot like ChatGPT with a few subtle differences. So the first thing that it asks us is to select a model. And this is really cool because Olama gives us um, access to a huge number of models, as you'll recall. So I'm just going to select our Phi model, which we know and love. Um, and then it gives us some example prompts down here that we can just click to get started. But we also see that we can attach images or files if we wanted to use a multimodal like Lava. We can type in our message, kind of as we would expect. And we can even do uh, voice input if your browser supports that. So just to see how this interface behaves, I'm going to click on the tell me a fun fact about the Roman Empire. That's pretty cool. It gives me a really snappy response, but it also has some great features like I can edit the response. Um, if I go up here, I can even edit my question. I can copy the question or response. Um, I can have the response be spoken, and I can even have it be regenerated. But over here on the left, we also see that our chat was added to like a chat history. And so every subsequent chat that we have is also going to be added to that list so we can find it really easily. The sidebar is also where a lot of the functionality for the Olama web UI lives. So at the top, this is where we create new chats. Uh, we also have access to model files, prompts, and documents, which I'm not really going to cover this time, but you should definitely explore them on your own. And if we come down here to the bottom and click on our profile, we have the admin panel, which is where you would uh, create and delete users. So for example, if you wanted to bring on friends and family to use your Olama instance, they could do that. And we also have the settings menu. The settings menu gives you access to a lot of really cool features. So for example, in advanced, you can change the seed, you can change the temperature of your model. These are like much uh, deeper underlying parameters for different models. Um, but speaking of models, we can also download and delete models uh, directly via Olama through this really nice interface. So now we've confirmed that we have a UI that connects to our Olama instance and works on our desktop browser. Now let's put it on our phone so we can take it with us. As I mentioned earlier, to do that, we're going to be using a tool called ngrok. And this tool just forwards one port on your machine to a URL that ngrok hosts. Make an account on the ngrok website for yourself if you don't already have one. And then once you're in, you'll see the same page that I see. I'm just going to follow these instructions to get started. The first thing that we're going to have to do is to download the ngrok utility. Um, it gives us this brew install link if you have homebrew, uh, but if not, you can also use their website to find uh, just like a regular download that doesn't rely on any external tools. Once you have the downloaded, then all you need to do is configure your ngrok instance on your host machine with the auth key that they give you. Finally, once you've added that, then ngrok is all set up and is ready to host your application on the internet. Okay, so we're just going to take this command that ngrok provides for us and go to our terminal, paste that in and change the port to the port that we want, which is 3000, and voila. Okay, we see that our session status is online. We have our forwarding address here. So this is what we're gonna copy. And let's just confirm that this works. Okay, and so check this out. This is the same interface that we saw, except this URL is no longer localhost. This is now on the open internet. And if we go back to our terminal, we can see that uh, resources are being fetched here. This is really cool. Okay, so now we have all the pieces in place and the moment is finally upon us. What we wanna do is take this URL for our ngrok application and paste it into the browser of our phone. I have that here, I'm doing a screen recording. So once we have that, we just log in uh, with our email address here, which I have as test at fake.com. Again, it really doesn't matter what your um, off is. We can sign in. And so not only do we have this running on our phone, which is impressive enough, but when we go over here, we actually see that our chat is here exactly as we left it. So we have our question, we have our answer, and we can still interact with it. Even if we're a thousand miles away, as long as we have an internet connection, we can interact with this UI and our LLMs running on our home machine. I think that's really awesome. One other thing that I wanted to call out is this web UI is actually a progressive web app or a PWA. And that means that when you save it to your phone as a bookmark, uh, your phone will actually treat it as if it was an app. Um, and so you'll be able to see it kind of full screen like I'm showing you now. Just one thing to bear in mind, you're going to need to have ngrok running on your machine whenever you want to access this remotely. So you might just keep it running in the background if you want to. Okay, so that's it. We now have a slick UI running with chat, accounts, model management, and a lot of other really great features. And best of all, this can run on our computer at home, on our phone, or really anywhere with internet. So let me know in the comments, how do you see yourself using this? Are there any other UIs for Olama that you think I should check out? What other devices besides your phone would it be cool to run this on?
Thanks again for joining me on this tutorial. To see what else I'm working on, please be sure to like and subscribe.